Math and Monkey Music Show, Taylor and Keith Gibbs. Keith is the vocalist, guitarist, vocal stylist from Sasquatch. How are you? <laughs> Great. How are you? Good, good, good. I'm glad you're on. Um, as we were talking earlier, we were talking about the album cover of your newest album, but but all of your albums is and in the genre of, I don't know what you call it, stoner, desert, gloom, doom. It doesn't really matter anymore. It's just good. I know it all. Yeah, it's, yeah, it doesn't even matter. The artwork is always fantastic. Yeah, it's um, a pre -rap. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, the newest album is just totally trippy. That album cover is totally trippy. We're, we're going to delve back into it because it's a great album. Uh, yeah, Fever Fantasy 2022 20, actually came out, right? Just came out in June. Wow. Yeah, yeah, not, not too long ago. I feel like it's been a little bit. See what happens is I've been listening to it for a while. And with COVID, everything blurs together for me. Plus, I'm old and I get confused. I get lost in the woods like Henry Fonda and Golden Pond. It's, it's it, That's a whole thing, though. So we'll just move forward. <laughs> but let's talk about you guys. So you guys have been together about 22 years, right-ish? Something like that, yeah. Almost the entire lineup has never changed. Like one, one change, too, which is fantastic. Yeah, I mean, we went through a couple changes, but, you know, just, I mean, even since the inception of Sasquatch back, like, when I before L.A., I mean, there's been a bunch of members, but the primary members, yeah, Steve Core. Right. And now you remember is what well, your newest members actually in the other coast, right? The side of the coast over in um Boston area, I think, right? Yeah, I'm I'm actually on the East Coast right now. Oh, are you? Yeah, yeah. I'm oh. I'm in uh, New Jersey living. Oh. Living the living the dream here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gloom. The, the dream capital of the world, New Jersey. <laughs> I'm only a few hours. Yeah, you're actually really close to me then. Um Oh man, it's pretty funny. I know how close you were. The next time we'll have to do it in person. Um, hopefully, you guys yeah, will do some dates over here too. You know. Yeah, we're trying to set up some stuff. We did. We toured um, last um, last summer and it did work really well. So uh, we're looking into doing the states uh, pretty soon. Coming up. But let's talk about so the inception of you guys for twenty years ago. I mean, that's it's a long time, man, for a band to stay together, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's a lot of work. You know, enjoy your, you know, the people you play with, and it's just, uh, it's an absolute love. So, I'm lucky. I get to play with some really great dudes. You know, I've always had that luxury. I've never really dealt with bad bandmates, so I think that's super important. Do you think it's because you yeah. keep a smaller group too? You use your power trio. Sometimes you have an extra member, but for me to piss off? <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. I didn't say oh, that. Yeah. The internet said I, that. No. I like it my way, but uh, no, I, I really have great guys in the band and their understanding of, you know, I get a little bit emotional <laughs> here and there and that stuff, <laughs> but no, it's, it's great, man. I mean, really, it's a wonderful thing to play with your best friends, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I was going to say every band needs a Mariah Carey. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind doing it. <laughs> Let's talk about the beginning of this. Like you guys have a great reputation at this point now. You're pretty established actually. Especially in the genre, you're you're well known, well respected. But starting out, how much of a challenge was it to kind of get your feet really kind of in it? Like, is it really a challenge? I mean, because it's such a it was, you know. Yeah, well, here's the thing, and I'm gonna say this because the, the the genre is not, especially in the beginning, it's not a huge money making thing to make a career. And all rock bands is hard, but really, outside if you're trying to become a jazz musician. To make money for a living. <laughs> this is the other genre. It's going to be a challenge at first until you're really established and people know who you are. Yeah, yeah. It's the love of tour too, is what keep, kept me going. I mean, I just love the tour. I love to play live shows. You know, so I mean, yeah. This was I wasn't getting this for for the money. It just was this wonderful, you know, what do you say, journey, whatever. It's just this fun thing to just tour and get to be able to do this all the time. So I just kept, and then finally we started actually making something. I mean, whatever it's a living or not, but. Right. Yeah. Certainly, you know, older guys, we uh, need to come home with something. But, you know, we still do it for the absolute love of it, man. Just traveling, man. Traveling is just amazing. I recommend it to people who don't travel. It's just changed my life. That's insane. You're so happy about it still. At this point, you know, yeah. it's insane. Four months straight. It was <laughs> it was ridiculous. And, uh, you know, we kept questioning, like, what the hell are we doing? Like, by the end of it, and like, you know. We were all sitting in the airport in Frankfurt going, are we still going to do this? And it was funny. I'm not even kidding. We're getting offers. And before we even get on the plane to go home, to start doing the next tour. And we're all looking at each other. We're like, I can't believe we're going to say yes. 
We all did. We all <laughs> it was amazing because we all couldn't wait to be done after that four months. I'm not even kidding. This is a God's honest truth story. It was just amazing. We're all like, let's do it. So that's how much we, the three of us, love playing with each other. I mean, and it's really, it's we're all for one, one for all. Like, it's amazing. No that's question. Good. That is pretty amazing. And it's funny, as you're saying the other day, like a lot of bands will say, it's better to have somebody you like. And I'm not saying about the quality of musicians, but it's the, a lot of band leaders will say, I'd rather have a decent musician that can learn learn it than have somebody who's, you know, spot on, unbelievable, but be a jerk. It's important to have the right people on tour with you. Everything else can be learned, you know? Yeah, Otherwise... like the chemistry, you know, the three of us, that's a the thing. There is something like... I really notice, and people say it to us a lot, you know, and maybe it's corny, but it's so true that people are always like, you guys kind of have a thing going on between us. There's like a little bit of an extra electricity. And I really think it's true because we really do. Like, we are like that, like as friends too. Like, we really have a good time together. It's all honest. Everything's honest. So I, I think it's just really this, this current lineup really just, we just have this fun that I've never had playing all line. That's not uh, saying anything about other lineups. It's just, oh. this is really, and I mean, it's so, so much fun playing with these guys right now. Like, it's amazing. <laughs> Even on the bad nights, I'm having a great time. <laughs> and, 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 you know, and th and three three members could always say that third thing, you know what I mean? Like, people always pair up in different groups. So if it's just three of you, it even makes it even better. That is, that is that, you know, that tight. We do. We have a this this amazing relationship, man, really. We have us all, it, all, you know. How has the songwriting changed, though, over the years now, especially as you've, got new members you've grown you've got older and kids and the road i mean yeah i listen more that's for sure yeah the other guys what they have to say and so just because i usually have a you know we all know that it's, there's no secret that I, I usually come with all most of the idea and that's only because i play and sing you know i do two of the right i usually i have you know doing that so i'll come in on to the guys hey this is that i used to be just like this is the way it's going to be no changes. I wrote the song. It's done. <laughs> wow, man, that's yeah. hard. <laughs> well, I mean, kind of not not so hard like that. Not like I walked in and like told them, you know, fuck off. It was more of like I was very adamant about like this, and I have an idea, and this is the way it should be. And uh, you know, then I realized that um, it's a lot better when I listen to them. <laughs> that's what's changed. you know. When I was younger, I was I was really like headstrong. You know, yeah. I kind of I, you know, you know how it is. I mean, and then I got you older know. and. It's true, and I have listened how the maturity of everything has changed because of listening to my good friends who I respect so much. So, and, you know, without being silly, like, once again, it's just true. Like it's just not true. Here, here's the thing, also, I think, especially on a, in a rock band or, or any band starting out, somebody it doesn't hurt to have a leader that's also really headstrong and is going to do it no matter what. Because truthfully, you probably wouldn't have made it this far along if everybody was kind of like wishy washy. Somebody would have cast your chips and it would have, you really need somebody who's just going to push through everything. And now that you've kind of had a spot where you guys are kind of, you know, <laughs> you're known, you know what I mean? At a point where you can kind of like lean back and say, all right, we're not going anywhere. We can, no, we you know, we kind of know what we're doing now. We can survive off this gig. Let's breathe, you know. I think things are better than ever. I mean, there's some stuff coming up. We got, uh, I'm sure I'm allowed to say it, but we got like a bunch of this tour coming up. Summer going through uh, Portugal and all those festivals. And then we have something coming up in November. I think even we might be hitting Iceland this time. And there's been talk of that all through England, like all this interesting stuff, even going to Japan, playing wow. up in, playing up in uh, Darwin in Australia, like all these, <laughs> these places that like, you just can't even imagine ever going like even just on vacation. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. And coming up like just now, it's like getting better like, after COVID because, Right before COVID, things were just flying for us. We were, we were doing great, you know. I mean, it, it just things were work opening up for us, and we were touring a lot, and people got a lot of respect because we were easy to deal with, and you know, it's just the way we run it like a business. We treat everybody as they should be treated, and mm -hmm. that that reputation goes a long way for us, you know. I've noticed that how that people like dealing with us because they know it's going to be an easy time. It's just going to go well. We're not no problems. They're happy. And yeah, so, and then uh, after COVID, it all started to open up again. So now, man, so much going on. <laughs> how, how, well, I was going to say, A, I want to say that, yeah, I think the new the new rock and roll model, when I say rock and roll, I just mean all music, is being kind and respectful. You know, that's how you get the gigs. That's how you play in the bands. That's how you do everything. Nobody wants to deal with a jerk. I mean, it's just too much going on in the world nowadays that right. they're like, 
I can't deal with this anymore. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. I, you know, it all comes down from Cass, our bass player. He just it's the way he operates, and he just doesn't put up with any of that bullshit with anybody. He won't work with anybody. He just won't do it. He's just, I don't have time for that. He's, he tells me all the time. He expects that out of the band too. He's like nobody's ever a jerk to a fan. Like it's so true, and he really means it. He's he's all real about it, and it trickles down. It all. We've always been that way anyway, but now even more so. It's like we're very conscious of never being dicks and giving the time to them and it's true because it does pay off because then they're they're so loyal oh yeah it's they're loyal as shit we got some friends that are so damn loyal it's because we're kind to them and talk to them and treat them you know you know i mean because we're just normal dudes you know sometimes they think we're more and we're like man, we're just, just four, three idiots man they're having fun well, but, you know. the thing is you can survive now you know with if you have a you know instead of trying to get a hundred thousand people if you get a thousand Devoted fans, they'll make more money, you know, in a steady flow to a thousand loyal fans than you will of, of, of a broad shot of trying to get a hundred thousand fans nowadays. That's that's what the market is, you know. So it's just good economics too. Besides being a good human being, you know. Fun to, it's fun to have listen, the one thing I've realized is so much fun to have friends all around the world. Like if I was on a vacation in so many places I could get in touch with people and they would welcome me into their home. And this is from mm-hmm. touring and friends with people and it's amazing around the world how many people like you just friends that i stay in contact with and it's just, you know wow what a great thing you know you have friends everywhere that was the best part about doing it actually sounds really cool um so the thing is so with covid like how did how did how did it affect you guys like do you, is that when you took the time to write the album and kind of uh you know I, recalibrate i just sat in the house and with my daughter and yeah wrote, wrote songs on my uh iphone and uh drank a lot <laughs> you know did a lot of whatever uh yeah I, I mean i i i definitely wrote a ton i have folders and folders of stuff that'll be coming up on our next record because um favorite fantasy was already written before covid we had finished okay. it before it was done in the studio we had it recorded it was just about to come out and then covid hit and then Cass said sit on it really because Record we all did, and we were like, we want to tour on it because there's no point in putting out a record, as far as I'm concerned, and just put it out for the way we think. So we wanted to tour on it, and so that's what. So it, it was been written for. I was like five years old, six years old. Oh, that's gonna be really <laughs> frustrating for you as an artist. I don't think there's a wrong thing. I think it's been really interesting watching artists navigate. First off, the digital world was already changing as it was. Record sales were changing, but then COVID changed everything 100 percent again. Um, like some people want to release the album because fans are at home and they get to listen to it. So I enjoyed those albums, but I also understand a, a band has an album they want to tour on. But then, then you get the problem is now you've got all this music, new music, and it feels like you're you're, you're touring on an album that you did like so long ago. You know, no, well, I mean that we we were playing songs on this tour that are on our next record that we yeah. haven't even recorded because we're so far ahead and we you know we we're pretty prolific. We write a, we write we got tons of songs. So yeah, that's what we're we're doing right now. We're just we were just talking the other day about going up to Cali and uh, start writing a new record in a couple months. Because we all we practice out there. Oh, where so, California? Yeah, we practice out there. We're still based out of there, but sorry, my Rottweiler is about to eat my my Gibson. Hey, he's chewing on my Gibson. So oh, not, not cool. Did you see him? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I got a sidetrack. Yeah, we were That's just uh, we uh, we're based out of LA still because we go out there LA to practice gives us an opportunity to go out and fall out too when it's cold. Yeah. Riggs and I could Austin, so we were about to do that, and we have a show I think in Edmonton, and we were going to go out and start writing the record right before we flew out to do that one. How do you guys even practice? So it's like you literally have to get together right before, or you guys are so far along at this point where it's just you need a couple a couple warm gigs and you're fine. We uh. Let me see my pedal. Sorry. <laughs> Come, Come here. here. Stop it. All right. Um. Well, that too. But we we go out to LA a lot and practice because it's fun. You know, we go Riggs and I love to go get margaritas in the day while Cass is doing his stuff, and then <laughs> you know, <laughs> we get a little trouble out there. It's fun. So we we actually go out there to just to practice, stay for a week. Cass has a nice house that we uh, crash at. And, mm-hmm. We, we bond as a band, you know, we eat dinner every night. It's kind of, it's, we're very much a family, you know. It's interesting because, I mean, how long were you guys together before you separated, like, like, live so far apart? I mean, 
to establish yourselves? I was living in LA till 2000, lived out there for like 17 years. And then uh, right before COVID, I came back. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting distracted. He's eating everything. Um, yeah, I moved back after, uh, before, before COVID and my dad was sick. And then it was just sort of, I stayed here because it was just, it was very expensive in LA, you know, it's much easier to live here. Plus I'm from here. I, I like going up here, my, the whole thing, you know? I like her growing up in suburbia where it's nice yeah. and calm, big city. Yeah, LA's pretty much, it's like a business now if you're out there. I, well, everyone's left LA now. They're all going to like Vegas and Nashville and, you know. Expensive. Right. So That's cool. No, it, it's interesting because like, as you talk to people, as they've talked to a lot of bands, like it's changed so much. Just guys in bands that have members that are like in England and then like in Argentina. And I'm like, Remember growing up, you're like, you, you can't imagine, I can't be in a band with this guy. He lives in the other town. I don't have gas money to get him over to my, my basement to practice, right? Well, it's gotten smaller. There was a point, you, it's so far I was, away. I was thinking about moving to Barcelona because I loved it. I love it so much there. I literally was thinking about like just doing it. Screw it. Why not go there for like three or four years? And uh, I was going to do it. I really was. And then I just, then COVID, everything comes up, you know, reality yeah. hits. But yeah, and the guys were like, sure, we'll come over here. We'll practice for like two weeks, go home. So, but bands do that all the time, man, now. Oh, it's, we, now everybody lives everywhere. Like, I don't even know how anybody gets meets anymore. Like, it's crazy. The good thing is when we go out there, we don't fuck around. We we literally get stuff. We go down four or five hours a night, knock it out. So it's like, it's actually better because we are there for a job, kind of. So it seems like we definitely we work harder. So well, instead of it's, just it's changed, get, you know, next week we'll practice this week and uh, we'll get it done, you know. So you are held to a, a, a certain thing. People people do need a task and a, and a time limit. I think all of us do, right? I'll wait till yeah. the day before it's due before I start that school paper. I'll, you know, I, I hear that a lot in my, in my house. Yeah. <laughs> last totally, you know, it's the best I could have done. It was last minute, but right. you know, I, I don't see like bands nowadays so i don't know how they're going to do it like because they're so far apart it's, it's going to be interesting to see how the world's going to change now because like you guys had time together to grow as a young musician yeah but are bands going to form like this far apart and then learn to just record and jam all remotely is it going to be the same energy like it's or is it going to be better worse i don't know just different maybe right in a, in a room together i think that you got to need human the human touch i mean well, not the human touch but just being the human energy but you know what? Then I don't know a shit because I'll tell you what I've never done that uh, remote thing because we talked about it. I'm like, I can't do that. I can't sit in my room and do it. I got to be in a room with you guys. Well, you but think I about know. it though. There could be advantages to it. Like, it's like, you know what I mean? Like, you're in the band practice or whatever. And you're like, everyone hangs I, out. You're like, you're like, I can't stand being here. You're like, you hit the button. You're like, I got to go. Beep, but done. <laughs> I had a, a mechanism where I could get out of practice anytime I wanted to. I don't, <laughs> it wouldn't work. I would never be a practice if it was just me at my apartment. Right. Well, I, was thinking, I can see myself. I would want to be, and that was my the favorite part when I was younger. You know, being in bands is is, is you know being with people. You know, yeah, all right. Now, I mean, this is fun. We can talk, but but like, I wouldn't want to create music from scratch unless that was a, we already established band is different. But I wouldn't want to be in a brand new band like all the time. Not just doing a song or a one off, even in a project. That's different. But to be a, a new band, you got to kind of cut your teeth together for a while. Yeah. Agreed, man. Agreed. I just even just recording. I love being in the same room. We all do all the basic tracks. We, we're in the same room, you know, playing together. I don't like that separation. I don't get that feeling that I that I do that excitement playing with somebody else. You know, the up and down, the rise, the ebb and flow of the music. You know, you can change so. it too. You can change the music as you're in there. You're like, oh, you know, this should be here. This should be here. It's it's you know, it's a lot easier. Um, so I'm digging. I'm looking at your wall here. What have you got back there for guitars? Now I'm kind of uh, I'm digging what you got there. Well, the uh, I got the two customs, Les Paul customs, and then I got yeah. um, I got a, a '70s Fender there, the big old fat headstock, and I got my that's my daughter's Randy Rhodes. <laughs> she start, just started playing, and so she got a little shark fin there, little Jackson. So that's it, is it gold? Is that gold? It looks gold from here. The Jackson? Yeah, it looks actually no, gold. It's a wood grain one. It's one of the cheap ones. It's like a oh, two hundred dollars. Okay. It's, I think it's beautiful, actually. I play it all the time. I throw on anthrax or something like that. Mm -hmm. 
play along with it. I love it. It's just a rippingly fast guitar. That thing is just, it's just speed. And, I, don't think uh, I, I own any more expensive guitars anymore. I've gotten them online. I got, I went online and I found somebody who's selling an Aria Pro 2 for 40 bucks. I looked it up. It's like, you know, from like 83 from Japan or something. Like it's a great guitar. It's like, it's way, way undervalued, you know? Yeah. I yeah. always find you use guitars like that because I have a bunch of cheap guitars too, like that too. That are the same, you know. It's, it's I'm a I'm a I'm a Les Paul custom guy. Like it's just just always been my thing since I was a teenager. It's just I love the beauty of that thing. And this one, the the cream one's like the Randy Rhodes one, man. So I'm a huge Randy Rhodes guy. Did you see I the just, documentary yet? That's out. Yeah, I mean, I love it. It's great. Is it good? It's good. I just like anything Randy Rhodes. Just looking at those old clips of him playing like Quiet Riot and stuff like that. It's just he's such a great guitar player. I love this tone, and I love that cream that cream Les Paul he played too. So that's exactly why that one's there. So I yeah. think he's great. Uh, the only thing I always always wonder, I'm like, being that bow tie though. Can we just can we Photoshop? <laughs> can we Photoshop that out of the picture? Because he's like everything is so cool. Even it's fine. It doesn't change the things about him. But I'm like, that's the one thing that always throws me off. You know what I mean? I hear you. It was a little weird, but like, he's just like a Chippendale there, and like, <laughs> but, he's, but it's but it's like so huge too. It's like it's like comically large. <laughs> Right, and he's such a tiny guy. Right, it was probably full size, full size bow tie. He's just tiny, but he was great, man. I love his tone. That's why I turn my mids all the way up because I just mm -hmm. love that sound he had. And I was always like, "How does he get that?" I was like, "Oh, his mids are always on 10. So ever since then, my mids are always on ten. I mean, uh, so yeah, I get I get a lot of influence from Randy. Not the my guitar playing so much because I'm like a classical type guy, but just right. the tone. I just love that old Ozzy stuff. I just, he was great. He's my one of my favorites. Well, that's sure. a good time. You know, I always wonder, and you talk about greats, actually, um, like like or like Hendrix or like any of these guys that died really young. Like, yeah. what do you think? Like, I wonder, like, what have really would have happened to Randy like this many years along? You know what I mean? Would he you have to You want to know, cashing in? <laughs> okay, maybe he would have changed and done totally not done metal and like turned his back on it and not like in a bad way saying that's old. I don't want to do it. You know what I mean? Like. There's artists that have yeah. done that and just totally walked away. And he could have been, you know, um, like a Jakey e. Lee or something where you're like, he played a couple things and you're like, where is he for 20 years? And then he comes back for a gig. Like, you know, oh, Jay. Oh, God. he's great. It's, it's a crime it's he's not playing more, right? Yeah, I used to love Badlands too. The great is his solo oh. band. Oh, they're, they're such a great, great songs. That first album yeah. was the best. And the second one, Voodoo Highway, was really good too. Wasn't there a I never third? Heard the first the first record is the one i knew with uh you know like uh winter's live, calling yeah high, uh, the high wire high, high wire. wire yep yep <laughs> and uh was it? dreams in the dark man that song yep. was kidding yeah the, the the uh voodoo highways on youtube if you dig if you want to hear it check it out it's on there but i thought that a third one that was unreleased that was coming out or had come out now they had a bunch of material but they vanished i mean obviously because ray got it died of aids but um yeah. yeah, it was harsh, but but to the, my point is like you know like what would have happened to Randy? They would have loved to see what happened to him with his playing at that level at that age. Like, where would he have gone? Well, he probably I just be, would I would think we, he would go on to do what a lot of the other guys do, just go on and keep studying because he was kind of a guy who was in the study, and he would probably end up being a great classical guitar player maybe because he yeah. was so in. Actually, that's it's funny. He like a lot of people. He. uh I, I followed his pattern a lot because when I saw that he got into theory and class guitar, all of a sudden I wanted to do that. You know, I needed to know it was funny that I did learn it all. And I forgot it completely by the time I, I started playing a rock band. Like I, I remember some of it, but I was determined to do base all my decisions on writing off music theory. Like I, like I was going to do that. Like Randy did, you know, like you hear it in his music. He's doing a lot of yeah. classical changes. And I swear I was going to be that guy. And so funny. I ended up, playing three chord rock which i love but uh with that i got playing classical guitar yeah and i i loved it i played it for years and i can still play it pretty well but i just don't do it anymore it's just my 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 right hand doesn't move as quick but yeah i got <laughs> uh, that whole thing i was going to be that you know like play like ingve and i just couldn't i couldn't do that the the the, the mastering of that of the precision i could never mm -hmm. get my fingers to move that precisely that quickly yeah and I, so I, was, I can't i'm the blues box and never never look back man <laughs> well it, it, well 
problem is, I mean, this is like with Randy being fast and, and whatever, but I mean, like Ingve is just too fast all the time. Like it, it, you're losing a song there. I mean, he's ridiculously good, but no, it, I don't really hear a song in it, in, in it too much. It's like you got to pull back a little bit. It's like it's like it's like Mariah Carey. You, you if you oversing every single note, if there's no highs and lows, you're not going to appreciate it as much. You know what I mean? You know, Ingve's best music was when he had a band, like a real band, doing songs and vocals, and you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But to the I point, I think you probably you probably do stuff though, right? I'm sure you, your theory probably creeps in though in the back of your head that you don't even realize it. Sometimes there there is times when I'm like looking for something. I'm like, oh, you know, maybe I could do this. Yeah, but I mean, for the most part, I don't. I, I'm on autopilot. We just do whatever. Hey, that's that chord sounds cool. <laughs> you know. Well, it, it's funny because most guitar players came and read music or, or, or have any lessons. You know, I mean, and, you know, the more the bigger they are, the like the less they know. It seems. Right. Right. I don't even notice that because you probably would be on tour and you meet these people. You're like, I can't believe you guys, you're so good. You know, how long do you play or would you learn? They're like, I don't can't even read music. You're like, what? Some people just have that ability, man. I, I know plenty of people that just can play the shit out of the guitar, like, like just effort, effortlessly. And I'm like, man, I have to concentrate a little bit. I know, shit, yeah. we talk. I'm playing. Go look at me. <laughs> turn away. You're throwing up my focus. I know guitar players. I've mean, talked to them. I'm like, I'm like, so the best guitar players in the world, you talk to me, like, so, you know, practicing during COVID, they're like, I haven't even touched my guitar since the tour. In fact, I got to relearn my songs. I'm like, oh. <laughs> that's that's absolutely the truth. I, I remember before we started, right before we started going back on tour again, that I literally had to sit here and go through all the stuff, like, because I was playing just new stuff all the time. Not one time was I playing old stuff. And I was like, where is that? What's that change? But it's so true. <laughs> you do forget. You'd think. You'd think you'd remember it after all these years, but. And the, is the irony I go get to go on YouTube and you get to find some like ten year old kid from like Sweden who's going to reteach you your own chords, and your own notes uh, on YouTube before you go on tour. Talked about replacing the the band with three other th three younger kids. We just figure out who could do each one of our jobs, and we'll just we'll just we'll market them as Sasquatch. Oh, I can't. <laughs> it's just a young version of us. And then we'll just sit back and we'll be like the man. We'll manage the career. <laughs> and so we'll go on endlessly. I don't know. <laughs> that could be, that could work. That could work. Like we'll, we'll squatch. You could just start out I'm training. That. Sit back and watch us play. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny how it's, how it's really changed. It's like, yeah, I got no calluses on my hands all here. I'm like, they're like if no. I play guitar right now, some of my guitar heroes have said, I, this, if I picked up my guitar right now, I probably would actually, my fingers would bleed because I have no calluses. I'm like, what? That's insane. Yeah. I got home from this this four months, October 20, 29th. I think I've played my guitar twice since then. Wow. You know? But I just just put it down. I mean, I didn't want to say it anymore. I mean, I'm sickened by that. <laughs> Open that case up every night. Yeah. You know, I'm well well, you need a break from it. You can't get it can't get exciting if we do it and then not do it again, you know. So how is no. this gonna work with you guys for like so the, like a tour? So are you guys get like Management reaches out to you. They say we got these packages, we got these little things because you got some things already lined up. Or do you guys actually say, "Hey, you know what? We want to tour here, put the feelers out," or is it like you just feel, at this point because you guys can feel offers now because you're you're more well known, and you have a good rep, where you guys can kind of probably have a little, little more little opportunity to pick and choose a little more now. Yeah, oh for sure, and it's a little of both. You know, we say we'd like to tour like the states or like you know Australia or whatever. We just Put it out there and we have booking agents the us you know australia europe so we just say hey we're looking to tour and then they'll just put together stuff man it is kind of like that now we you're right about that we've been around for a while so we can you know we don't have to fight for everything all the time anymore it's right. more of like get some stuff that's cool and you know they like to work with us like we said we got that good reputation of like we'll generate money for them and we're also yeah. we'll be no problem for them and we're always professional too so that that does help and so that's why it makes it easier for us to go hey we want to go on tour okay we'll do it because these guys are you know we never cancel that's one thing with us we never cancel gigs we never cancel tours if we if we commit we're there i mean if I, my leg's broken we're still going so and people know that so they'll, they'll invest in it right because you know you're i know a lot of bands last minute cancel i've seen it just happen over the summer i mean just canceling before festivals like i can't imagine doing that Keeping your booking agent is what I'm saying because then you become a liability to them, you know. Yeah. So, so I think yeah, that's it, a fan too. You don't want to pay for tickets because you know, right? And you know, we don't know why that happens. You know, some bands have health problems, family problems. You know, family is always more important than 
the band always. But if you're just doing it because you're screw ups, man, that's a man, that's that's no way to <laughs> right. No way. Well, if you hear band members got a, a member is feeling sick, I understand. I'm like, all right, they'll come by, I'll get my money back. It's not a big deal. You know what I mean? But yeah, if it's the history of a band being like, oh, they whatever, you're like, really? Yeah, you know, right. no room for that. What is the market like over like in Japan and Japan and Asia? This type of music, are people digging it? I've never been over there, but we we were just offered. We were in Australia in uh, September, and we were. I I I don't know if I'm fibbing here because I'm pretty sure from what I understood of the conversation, we were offered to go to Japan, and so apparently they do well with metal and stuff like yeah. that or whatever. So so I I sort of heard it secondhand in the uh, talking to the tour manager over, or the uh, booker and agent over there. But I don't know. But apparently, he takes bands over there a lot. So, well, uh, if they so, love you, if they love their metal band, they'll give me loyalty. It's you know, if you're in, you're in. I'd love to go there. That, that you mean, so. You know, it's good if you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like that I mean, you use the word fibbing. I like that. I haven't had that one in so long. I feel like I'm in fourth grade. <laughs> I wanted to say it right. It wasn't like we were offered it. I know it was being talked about, and so I just want to say it right because I know if Cass sees this and be like, "We were never offered it." I'm like, that's not what I meant. Anyway, <laughs> well, the opportunity is good. I think, and, well, and that's what I'm asking because I mean, they love metal. So, so stoner, like, it, yeah. but, but Japan is, is another country. It's very loyal. I think one of the worst countries for like keeping commercial viability for 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 an artist really has been the U.S. You know, and we can only say because we're in the U.S. And it's not a dig towards the country. It's towards the economics and the fan base. You know, I was thinking about it the other day. Like, you're probably close to the same age. You remember how like heavy metal came and they say grunge wiped everything out, right? If you think about it, like a lot of us that are fan and when you're in your teens and you're older, you're that's your, your purchasing time, right? Your best times, you're remembering your best rock and roll Van Halen thing, right? But then you get college and around college in whatever go to get job, career things, around that big five gear thing is a lot of people are kind of like becoming adults. So grunge kind of came out on the radio and stuff, whatever. But if you think about that time period, just those besides like Alice in Chains and Pearl Jam. A lot of those bands are like one hits that you've only heard because a lot of people just kind of like walked away from music. And I think when people thought I came back, they came back to rock. Once Grunge kind of went away and those people were already established back in their careers again, they had more, um, you know, more, more money they could spend because they weren't paying for college or whatever. And they're going on the weekends and they're doing these festivals, you know, that you guys are playing at. You know, you know what I'm saying? It kind of feels like yeah. it, the math kind of fits there all of a sudden. Why it was this weird thing and, you know. And why music, I think that's another reason why kind of the market went kind of weird with grunge, you know, and got to kind of sneak in there. Yeah, I love grunge, man. I mean, shit, there's a lot of it in our music, man. I'm a huge Nirvana fan. And well, my Nirvana. point is the time, the, well, besides just a, the, the fact that metal got kind of like um, the repetition. But my point is like, as far as a lot of those bands aren't around anymore, though, that market was a really weird time. Yeah. For, oh, yeah. For those bands, you know what I mean? It really was. I mean, I, I love them too. I saw Alice in Chains. I saw Alice in Chains open up for extreme uh, i remember club. that did you see that tour i don't was... know if i saw that tour, but i remember it was coming around because i remember hearing about that but when soon as you said that it jogged my memory yeah but nan as i'm like i heard like one of these songs I'm like i gotta see this and it more than words had just come out and i'm like really this is gonna be the show and nuno is so good at guitar i'm like i'm gonna see nuno play you know i'm gonna see allison chains this is gonna be awesome and it was, but it was like a small club. It was insane. Um, and that was right when your music was getting kind of good, though, too. It was kind of breaking up suicidal tendencies and and Pantera. Um, yeah, that was that. You know, actually, Pantera was playing the clubs. That's why I saw Pantera. I saw Pantera over it for Prong, actually. Oh yeah, yeah. It was, I yeah. Off with uh, what's his name from Prong about a year ago? The Tommy. Uh, he, yeah, the one who's a guitar player in Danzig. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yep. Tommy. Oh, oh yeah. We played. We went and played golf. It was awesome. Put golf with Prong. I was. I was with uh, my friend who, uh, who, who, who's an assistant to Danzig, and we all went golfing. It's just funny that you said that. I was like, this is awesome. I love Prong. I'm golfing with the dude from Prong. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. A lot of rockers golf though. Yeah, Alice man. I mean, you, yeah, you know who uh, is a good golfer is uh, King Buzzo from the Melvins. Is he? Yeah, um, I've been out on the golf course more than once, like in L.A., because we all golf. Sasquatch is a golfing, <laughs> golfing band, funny enough. We all, we all golf. Um, but I've gone out there, I'm not kidding, man, at least four or five times on the public course we go to, it's a little par three. 
I buzz is out there whacking balls, man. I mean, it's just funny. Like you, you can't, you recognize him. And I, I know him sort of just being in the circles. Like you totally recognize him. You can't not recognize him. <laughs> Every time I'm like, look at his buzz over there, fucking driving balls off, off, off the whole one. It's just funny to see him out there, you know? Well, Especially yeah. About one of his outfits, you know, one of those crazy outfits. <laughs> on stage. But yeah. Those outfits are pretty crazy. You'll see some, yeah, you'll be fully tattooed, and then the a golf outfit is like a Rodney Dangerfield outfit, and you see all the tattoos on top of it. You're like, it totally throws a different, um, a different look, you know. Sorry to go off topic. Yeah, there's <laughs> no topic in this show. We're just introducing people that aren't aware of you or fans that haven't really you know, hear you talk about this kind of stuff. I think that's the whole point. I think if you're if you're if you're talking to an artist, there should be 100. percent Besides talk about the the music, you know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. the fans the fans should have an opportunity to hear other parts about you. I mean. Yeah, I agree. We tell the same story a lot of times. Like, where are you from? What's your, what's your you know, the, what's the song about? And like, oh, yeah. I don't know. Fine, but you know, it's, yeah, I, I agree I mean, with it. And sometimes I'll do it in like a little, this, you know, a little bio. It depends on the artist and stuff. But it's, I think it's more fun, you know, because you people that know you, will see you for you know twenty years, and be like, oh, that's cool. You know, golfing. Like, all right, cool. That's fun. You know what I mean? You know, and the new like, people go, oh, the new album. Okay, cool. But I do have a hole in one. That's the one thing I have. Really. <laughs> Yeah, Cass was there too to see it. He can't stand when I when I bring it up because he doesn't have one. <laughs> you know, being a stoner band, I figure you guys would be like, you know, frisbee golf, hacky sack. Um, that's the thing. I'm the only guy. That, yeah, Mother Nature. The other guys are just, just they're whiskey guys, man. You know. Yeah, I was just I, your stone on you anyhow. <laughs> I'm the I'm the frisbee golf guy, but I don't frisbee golf. But I would be most likely to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember somebody somebody showed me in, in college. I'm like, what is this called? Wait, Frolf? What? What is wrong? Like, what? Yeah. That was Atlanta in the early 90s. So, you know. Backer back in the day. <laughs> yeah. That was the time. That was the time. So that was the time. Ending on a on a musical note though, I want to say, where are we gonna um where's the plans of the album? Are you gonna do any videos, any like lyric videos, any more videos, any put stuff out there? How are we gonna do this with the new album and stuff cool. we were supposed to like uh, we were talking to Rick Kozik. Yeah, I don't know if you know who Rick Kozik is. He does like all the jazz stuff. He's the guy that does a lot of that. Stuff. Anyway, we've been friends with Rick for years. We were supposed to do a video for for like two albums now. And I was talking to him. I saw him in Santa Monica on tour over the summer. And we always wanted to get him to do a video for us because he, he's very into the scene and he's a good friend. He would give us great, you know, whatever, how we'd work it out. But um, that's, I mean, we've always talked about that. So that was one thing about a video. Um, I don't know. It's just weird. We just never sort of done that, you know. I, I keep saying we should. <laughs> it's about time. Yeah, it doesn't um, be a concept, even if it's a live video with some cool effects or some cool, even or a fun concept, you know. What I want to do is we have some really great footage from this Orange Goblin tour that we did, live shows. Like some, there were some shows that we were really, really on. We were we were so well rehearsed after three months on the road, and then we were just on certain nights. Like it was just magical. You know, we were playing these sets and it's some nights it would just worked and we have some footage of it. And I think there's a couple concerts where you don't have to edit it. We could literally put out the, whole, the thing straight out. Like, you know, I think it was that good. And so we talked about that, but Cass is, once again, man, our leader. He doesn't believe in the live albums because he doesn't want to rip off the fans. He thinks it's a rip off. And I always go, that's what they want to hear, though. Totally. I, I actually don't know why you guys, why more bands, especially this genre, doesn't do, and I was just saying this the other day, um, uh, Eddie, Hippie Hippie Death uh, Cult, you guys do downloads, yeah. do digital downloads. This is it super expensive? A five dollar download of the, of, of like one a couple of shows on the site between tours, so the fans have something a little fun to listen to. Not ripping them off if they want to buy it. You're not this is just doing like three different album covers for the same music. You know what I mean? That's not rip. That's ripping them off. Just good quality music live. Yeah, I I agree. I just he has this. He does have a bit of a standard of how he wants to things go i guess he, if he doesn't feel that it's if it's up to par to pay for it is more of a thing and he i guess he finds getting a whole show together that's good enough is more of a that it's not worth it so i guess yeah. if he found that we nailed it then he would be into it but i hear you i'm i'm about it but like i said he makes you a know lot of you know who would tell you if it wasn't worth buying the fans if they didn't buy it <laughs> <laughs> i said the same thing but uh i think this one honestly is something we might be able to get done with this one because it was good and he agreed too that it was really good it was probably the one time that he would put out something so but that's that uh great. like that i think it would be great i would love it and there's a, there would be a venue to go along along with it so because it was all taped you know it was done i think it was done in um 
up in smoke festival or something like that over in switzerland or something like that but yeah, that would, yeah. That'd be awesome. I mean, I, there can't be. I, I don't know why everyone's not doing like a lot of live music. You know, because we all grew up in the seventies listening to live albums, live music. You know, hi right, man, Kiss Alive wanted too. I mean, I, it was amazing, even though they weren't live. But <laughs> yeah, that's the most unlive album ever. It's even... I know. But, oh, the idea of sitting there listening to it as a kid was just amazing. Like right. I was at the con- I'm, I'm thinking like you think about like when you heard like your first like Zeppa bootlegs and stuff, and you can hear Jimmy making mistakes or whatever, and Robert, you know, the keys are actually you're like, that's awesome. I don't care. It's awesome. I, I prefer some of his mistakes, honestly. Right. He just there were certain little notes that was like, that's just genius. Oh, Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy Page, when you listen to him, it rocks. And then if you were a guitar player musician, you listen to him again, you really listen to him, you're like, man, it's kind of sloppy. And then you listen to it again, you're like, oh my God, that's genius sloppy because he's doing this thing where he's like he's floating. Between the notes, it's uh, like, yeah, I, you know agree. What I mean, I, I mean that the sloppy part of him is just amazing. When he just puts that slop in on those records, sometimes I'm like, "That's ballsy." Just and I don't that. think anybody could do it because because it fits perfect. It's not like it's it feels like it's sloppy and you're hitting stuff, but then you're like, "That kind of works though too." So, yeah, you know, when I'm sloppy, it sounds nothing like that. It sounds like you, you should put your guitar down. <laughs> <laughs> it's sloppy. When I- Sounds like slop, yeah. Yeah, sounds like you need to go sober up and put your guitar down, Sean. <laughs> yeah, you've got a bottle of Jack early tonight. You know? Yeah, pretty much <laughs> how it sounds like. So, I want to thank you, man. It's been awesome being on the show. I'll have you back again. Yeah, uh, inviting me on anytime. Yeah.